Artificial intelligence and machine learning are rapidly making their mark on every area of technology. The field of audio compression has long been dominated by codecs using perceptual tricks and fancy maths. But new algorithms making use of machine learning promise to upend the established order, making high quality audio take up even less space on your hard drive and allowing you to perform music and communicate over a far wider range of networks. Let's take a look. Ok, so just what is a codec? Well the word is a portmanteau of encoder and decoder. They exist both in hardware and software, but we're just focusing on the software ones here. A codec is essentially an algorithm which encodes or changes the representation of a digital signal or data stream so that it can be stored more efficiently. Audio codecs must include an encoder, which turns raw audio into the encoded or the compressed form, either to be saved as a file or as packets of data to be sent over a network. There's then a decoder, which turns that encoded signal back into audio. So why do we use audio codecs? Well, when we're storing data, it's essentially to save drive space. We can store an audio in its encoded format and then simply decompress it again the moment of playback. In real-time applications like Zoom for example, we use codecs to reduce the amount of data that we're sending over a network. The data is encoded by the sender, sent over the network in its encoded format, and then decoded again by the recipient. Let's set down some key terminology for this discussion. Firstly, lossy versus lossless. A codec is said to be lossy if there is content lost during the encoding and decoding processes. All the codecs we'll discuss in this video are said to be lossy as they inherently lose some content. In the case of traditional codecs, this is usually algorithmically selected, whereas with the machine learning based codecs, it's an inherent part of the process. Next, compression. Compression in this context is essentially the process that's performed by the encoders in the codex that we'll look at. It transforms the signal into a representation which requires less space to store, or less bandwidth to send over a network. It's then decompressed again at the time of use. Thirdly is bitrate. Bitrate is the number of bits that are required to represent a signal per unit of time. We will be expressing this as kilobits per second or kbps, as that's how many thousands of bits are used to represent one second of audio. Next is sample rate. The sample rate is the number of samples per second in the input signal or the decoded output signal. Most codecs can output in various different sample rates, from so-called narrowband, around 8000 samples per second or 8 kilohertz, to bullband, around 48 kilohertz or 48000 samples per second. Keep in mind the Nyquist limit. A narrowband signal at around 8 kilohertz is only going to capture frequencies up to around 4 kilohertz. That's fine for the human voice, but it's not so great for music. Next up is the Mushra test, which is a type of subjective listening test involving human participants which is employed to measure the perceived audio quality of a decoded signal. We'll see it in the form of a graph, on which the x-axis shows the bit rate and the y-axis shows the Mushra score out of 100. Generally, lower bit rates result in lower Mushra scores. Our final key term is Network Musical Performance, or NMPs. NMPs are real-time musical interactions between musicians over a computer network. They enable musicians who are in physically remote locations to perform as if they were in the same location. When we look at codecs, we'll be examining them through the lens of their usefulness for NMPs. Now let's take a look at three of the most popular non-machine learning based codecs, MP3, AAC, and Opus. MP3 is an incredibly popular codec which is made for storing and replaying audio, so it's not really for real-time use. It became popular in the early 2000s alongside the internet, as it creates file sizes that are around 10 times smaller than uncompressed audio. It's a form of lossy compression. It removes components of an audio signal that are imperceptible to the human ear, such as frequencies above our range of hearing or those that are masked by other frequencies. Then it encodes what's left into a small file size using mathematical techniques such as the fast Fourier transform and the discrete cosine transform. As it's intended for replaying stored audio, MP3 only encodes as low as about 64 kilobits per second of bitrate. Next up, AAC. AAC was designed as the successor to MP3 and was launched in 1999. Like MP3, it's a form of lossy compression that encodes only as low as about 64 kilobits per second. However, it achieves higher perceived quality at the same bitrate as MP3. To do this, it uses only the modified discrete cosine transform algorithm. You'll find it as the standard codec on sites like Apple Music, YouTube Music, as well as sometimes the Spotify web player. Our final non-neural codec is Opus. Unlike MP3 and AAC, Opus is specifically designed for interactive or real-time use like voice and video calling, although it can also be used to compress audio for storage. 
Because of its versatility and portability, Opus can be considered the current internet standard. It can encode audio at very low bit rates, as low as 6 kilobits per second. It can also achieve very low latencies, as low as 5 milliseconds at low bit rates, which is why it's used in lots of voice over IP applications like WhatsApp, Discord, and PlayStation 4's voice chat. It can also be used for network musical performances. For example, Sonobus uses Opus for its compression. It's built on top of two previous codecs, one called Silk, which was developed by Microsoft for use in Skype, and another called Celt, which is an open source codec designed to be low latency. So that's the traditional codecs, but what about the new state-of-the-art machine learning based ones? Well, a spate of recently released audio codecs make use of advances in machine learning to improve audio quality while reducing bit rates. Three of the key players in this market are Soundstream, Lyra, and N-Codec. First, let's discuss Soundstream. Soundstream uses a convolutional neural network in an autoencoder structure. It's trained end-to-end, -end, i.e. the encoder and the decoder are trained simultaneously, which it does to compress audio to extremely low bit rates, as low as 3 kilobits per second. During training, it minimizes the adversarial loss and the reconstruction loss to maximize the perceptual similarity between the training input and the decoded output. Mushroom tests show that Soundstream requires over three times less bandwidth than Opus when dealing with high bit rate audio, and around 1.5 times less bandwidth when dealing with high bitrate audio. For music, tests show that Soundstream performs better at 3 kilobits per second than Opus does at 12 kilobits per second. In terms of latency, it adds around 30 milliseconds by default. This can be decreased to as little as 6. That's a little bit more than Opus, but negligibly so. So what are its advantages? Well, it performs better than traditional codecs at similar bit rates. It can also be trained to combine enhancement, such as background noise removal, with the compression process and add no extra latency with the extra step. However, it only works on sample rates up to 24 kHz, so it's not really suitable for high quality music. Next, let's talk Lyra. Lyra is developed by Google, and in its current version, version 2, it's strongly based on the Soundstream convolutional architecture. However, it's specifically geared towards compressing speech. It supports three different bit rates, 3.2, 6, and 9.2 kilobits per second. Like Soundstream, quality is significantly higher than Opus at these really low bit rates. Encodec is built on a very similar architecture to Soundstream and Lyra, but it also makes use of an optional transformer model in the latent space which it uses to reduce bit rates and therefore save space. However, this component cannot be used for real-time applications currently. Also unlike Soundstream and Lyra, Encodec can work at 48kHz sample rate and in stereo. For stereo audio at 48kHz, it can encode at bit rates of either 6, 12 or 24 kilobits per second. As we can see in this table, at 6 to 12 kilobits per second, Encodec demonstrates little loss in perceived quality than the reference audio. In this figure, we can also see that for stereo audio, Encodec significantly outperforms Opus at lower bit rates and is similar at 6 kilobits per second to MP3 encoding at 64 kilobits per second. Encodec does perform worse on latency tests than Lyra version 2, although it's still around 5 to 10 times faster than real time. Okay, now we've discussed all these codecs, what are their advantages? Well, they all perform better than the current standard Opus in low bitrate scenarios. They can also all run in real time on a single phone CPU core. This means they don't need high-end hardware, and it also opens up the possibility of network musical performances on mobile devices. Okay, now I'm going to shut up and let's do some listening. We'll hear three samples, a speech sample, a solo violin sample, and a string quartet sample. For each, we'll hear the reference uncompressed audio, and then we'll hear it compressed by Opus and Encodec at several different bit rates. Let's take a listen, and then we'll discuss. Now I'm going to shut up and let's do some listening. Now I'm going to shut up and let's do some listening. Now I'm going to shut up and let's do some listening. Now I'm going to shut up and let's do some listening. Now I'm going to shut up and let's do some listening. Now I'm going to shut up and let's do some listening. Now I'm going to shut up and let's do some listening. Now I'm going to shut up and let's do some listening. Now I'm going to shut up and let's do some listening.
From these samples, we can really hear how Encodec represents the original audio much more accurately across a variety of bit rates. 6 kilobits per second and 24 kilobits per second are almost indistinguishable with Encodec, but they show a noticeable deterioration between the two in Opus. Only at 3 kilobits per second does Encodec really start to fall apart for the music samples. Of course, all of these samples show some deterioration in quality from the reference audio, but the machine learning based codec performs significantly better. Alright, so let's wrap this up. What are the advantages and disadvantages afforded to us by machine learning based codecs for network musical performance? A key advantage is that we can hold performances over networks using less bandwidth, which opens up a wider range of networks, including some imperfect network conditions. For example, we might be able to use mobile networks, NMPs over 5G, or be able to hold NMPs over Wi-Fi. Also consider rehearsals. In these scenarios, quality is not really as important as it is in the performance, but latency is still paramount. With a good codec, we might be able to hold home rehearsals over substandard home Wi-Fi connections. But there are some problems that we encounter regularly in NMP scenarios that a better codec can do nothing about. A better codec reduces the amount of bandwidth required to be sent over a network, but it cannot overcome some of the inherent latency in a network. For example, it doesn't control the route that our data takes to get from A to B, and, as with all networks, we're ultimately limited by the speed of light. A machine learning based codec is never going to reduce the latency of sending audio from London to Sydney. Machine learning based codecs are already showing a lot of promise when it comes to compressing audio, especially in the region of speech. We can expect to see these codecs integrated into video calling apps soon. We should keep in mind that the first neural network based codecs were released in 2020, so progress in this area has been rapid. We can expect progress to continue, taking NMPs out of the classroom and into the hands of the average home musician, and that is something we can all look forward to.